the time, and Rajesh gives the talk. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, hello? Okay. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, learning two-layer rectified neural networks in polynomial time. Um, and I, I'm Rajesh Jairam, and this is a joint work with uh, Anesh Bakshi and my advisor, David Woodruff. So I'll begin by talking about uh, the model. It's uh, rather similar to the last talk, but with some slight differences. So uh, we're going to be given input samples, x1 to xn, and these are going to be our d-dimensional input samples. And we're also given their classifications, m-dimensional classifications, a1 to an. And we assume this generative model, meaning that uh, there exists some underlying neural network such that uh, that generates this, uh, these classifications given the input data. So this is some uh, two-layer neural network given by rank k weight matrices, u star and v star, such that given xi, ai is produced by uh, first applying the first weight matrix v, then applying a nonlinear layer f, uh, and then applying uh, the second unknown weight matrix u star. So uh, in this work, we're going to consider rectified activation functions. Uh, so what is that? A uh, rectified activation function, well, you know the ReLU. Um, but in general, it's just a function that's uh, negative, uh, that's zero on the negative part. And then after the negative part, it's uh, increasing. So it's injective on the uh, positive part. So it could be the ReLU squared or even could go even faster than that. So that's all it means to be rectified. So this is the picture. The picture is just we have these two known uh, inputs. We have the xi's and we have the ai's, which are the classifications. And then we have this unknown generative neural network um, that generates the data. So these are our inputs. And the goal is to learn uh, the weight matrices. So in contrast to the log talk, the main difference here is that we're uh, properly learning these weight matrices. So we actually want to output weight matrices themselves uh, that uh, minimize uh, the distance to these underlying weight matrices. So we can simplify this whole thing a little bit further and write this as a matrix equation. So I have my input uh, xi's, and they're just column vectors, so I can stack them. And I'll create a d by n matrix, and I'll call that big X. And I can do the same thing for the uh, classifications as well and write a matrix big A. Um, and I can write this whole thing as a matrix equation, u star f of v star x equals A. Um, and this matrix equation has uh, two known variables, which are the x and the a, the, in, uh, the inputs and the classifications. And I have my two unknowns, and the goal is to learn these unknowns. So of course, uh, we would like to consider a slightly more general model, where uh, in the prior slides, we considered a noiseless model, also known as the realizable model, where uh, you see the uh, classifications exactly. But uh, in general, there may be some noise in the, in the observations. So we consider the noisy model, where uh, we have our inputs just like before, but before we observe the output of the underlying uh, unknown neural network, there's some uh, noise added. So there's an EI uh, m-dimensional noise vector added to all our samples. So the same picture as before, but now there's a noise vector in between uh, before we observe the uh, output of the neural network. OK, so what's the, what's the goal? Well, we want to actually uh, learn these weight matrices. So we want to output a u hat and a v hat that minimize the sum of square differences between u hat and u star and v hat and v star to some epsilon. So that's the goal. So uh, I'll begin by talking about worst case scenario where we have absolutely no assumption on the input at all. X can be anything. And uh, this is not going to be very surprising at all. But uh, uh, the problem is NP hard. Although it actually wasn't known to be NP hard uh, before for ReLU networks in this context um, uh, and until recently. And then there's a concurrent work which also proved the same result for uh, ReLU networks. Um, and this is uh, hard even for constant k, which means a constant number of hidden neurons. Um, but importantly, in this setting, the uh, hard instance in this case is a V star that actually has uh, deficient rank. It's not full rank. So, and this is kind of important because we actually show that uh, when the rank is, uh, when the rank of the matrix is full rank, there's an n to the k time upper bound for this problem, which wouldn't be possible without that assumption because we have MP hardness even for constant k. But that's not super interesting because n to the k is not very desirable. k is the number of hidden units. We'd like to be polynomial. So we're going to make some distributional relaxations to make the problem tractable. So uh, we're going to assume that our problem, uh, that our, the input comes from a Gaussian distribution. So our xi's are drawn from a Gaussian distribution independently with some unknown covariance matrix. And actually, as I'll talk about in a moment, there's some concurrent work by Ge et al. that, um, that I'll I mention uh, that uh, considers the same model uh, with symmetric distributions. And so combining our results with those results, we're able to handle these uh, mean zero symmetric distributions as well. And finally, for the noisy case, we need some assumptions on what our noise satisfies. So we're just going to assume that a noise is uh, mean zero in uh, sub-Gaussian. And it needs to be independent of the in input. So those are the assumptions. And so there's a, uh, as you guys know, there's a lot of work on this topic, um, especially for these generative models and also uh, different classes of noise and different assumptions. So I'll talk about 
some of the most closely related works. So as you just saw, uh, Gull and Clivens have uh, uh, done quite a bit of work on this, and uh, they're able to now uh, improperly learn two layer, non two nonlinear layer uh, neural networks. Um, and there's also the concurrent work that I mentioned of Gull et al. that uh, is considers the noisy model, the same noisy model as this result, and uh, is able to obtain approximate recovery for symmetric distributions and ReLU neural networks. And these two results were the first results for polynomial time al uh, algorithms in the approximate case. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so and there's also quite a few results for understanding the convergence of stochastic gradient descent in this model, which is using different techniques than this work. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk, state my the main results of this uh, work now. And so perhaps one of the most interesting results is in the noiseless case, we're able to uh, obtain exact recovery of the underlying weight matrices, U star, V star, uh, in strongly polynomial time. So what I mean by that is that the uh, runtime is polynomial in the number of bits uh, in the input. And we have Gaussian input, but uh, we can assume that it's truncated to some log uh, poly n precision. And uh, this holds for all rectified activation functions, but they need to be, uh, they need to grow, uh, there's some limit on the growth. They can't grow faster than e to the x squared, but I mean, mainly we care about the ReLU anyway. So this is fine. And again, we can extend this to symmetric distributions using some recent results. Um, yeah, and so for the noisy case, um, we're able to uh, obtain uh, which our, our desired goal, which was to output these approximations, u hat, v hat, that uh, minimizes some of squared errors between the true, v, the true v star and v hat and the true u star and u hat, um, and up to epsilon. And so we're polynomial in all relevant parameters, n, m, d, and k and one over epsilon. Um, and again, uh, this applies to uh, the noise class where you have mean zero sub Gaussian noise. Um, and uh, we also get semester distributions as before. And we handle all, all rectified activation functions with the same assumption that they're not growing faster than e to the x squared and the positive part. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about uh, some of the contributions of this paper and the algorithmic ideas. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the exact case because this, uh, the, uh, there's some different techniques in this case. So the first step is actually the same for both the cases and it's to uh, obtain an approximate uh, solution, uh, u hat and v hat. And uh, uh, in the noisy case, there's a number of more techniques that are needed, but the high level idea is that you're going to apply some techniques, some continuous optimization, uh, primarily tensor decomposition, to uh, obtain these, uh, these approximate solutions. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but see me in my poster session if you'd like to learn more. Um, so the next step in the exact case uh, is to refine these approximate solutions into exact solutions. And we're gonna do this in uh, strictly strongly polynomial time by setting up a linear system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my v hat, which is an approximation, and I'm gonna look at f of v hat x, and I'm gonna look at the sign pattern of that matrix. That's gonna be uh, the non-zero coordinates, and I'll discuss that in a second. And I'm gonna use that to approximate the activation pattern of the true hidden uh, neurons, f of v x. And then I'm gonna make some combinatorial arguments about the set of all possible activation patterns which could be realized in the row span of A. And I'm gonna argue that the actual hidden, true hidden uh, neurons, f of v star x, have a unique activation in that uh, row span. And then I'm gonna use that fact, along with having the activation pattern, to uh, set up a linear system. And as we know, linear systems can be solved in uh, strongly polynomial time. And I'm gonna use this to recover f of vx, and then v, and then u afterwards. Okay, so uh, this main technique that we use a lot is talking about activation patterns. So this is a very simple idea. An activation pattern of a vector, it's just uh, the set of non-zero, the subset of non-zero coordinates of that vector. So the idea is you have some network and you send some vector through it, and uh, at some point you apply some nonlinear function, like you apply the ReLU. So what does the ReLU do? The ReLU just uh, s zeroes out some subset of the coordinates. And the remaining coordinates are those active coordinates. They're the ones contributing to the next layer. So we call that the activation pattern of that vector because it's the set of uh, non-zero coordinates. And so the, one of the main combinatorial rent lemmas of this work that allows for the exact recovery is that if I have the activation pattern of f of vx, this activation pattern is actually totally unique uh, up to some positive scalings in the row span of A. So what does that mean? That means if I have any other matrix in the row span of A, such that the activation pattern of that matrix matches the activation pattern of f of v star x, then w must in fact be f of v star x, up to some positive scaling, which I omitted there. So what do we do? Well, we use our approximation, v hat, to recover the uh, activation pattern of v star x. Once we have that, we go searching for vectors in the row, uh, matrices in the row span of A that have that same sign pattern. 
And we can do that with a linear system, just trying to solve for the values that are zero. And then we solve this linear system and we recover f of vx, and from there we can recover uh, uh, v star and x star. And uh, so that, that's the main idea, high level for the exact case. We have quite a, uh, several other results, um, which, uh, some of which are not polynomial, uh, which can be f, p, t, and k, but which handle the different cases when you drop some of the assumptions, like uh, the rank deficient case, uh, which is also known as the non-identifiable case, and also for some more uh, general classes of noise as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, come see me at my poster session. I think it's 171 if you want to learn more about some of the other techniques. All right. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, Yeah, so for the exact case, uh, we can in some settings. Um, so the, 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 the main technique, as I mentioned, that's used here is tensor decomposition, and this is, uh, so the, the trick with tensor decomposition is you're able to write um, a fourth order tensor, which is a function of the, the input and the output. Um, and this crucially, and uh, you can write this down, and, but the thing is to compute the expectation in general, it's unknown what the closed form is. And so there's a trick like this, uh, generalized Stein's lemma that says that if you know it's from a Gaussian distribution, you can actually write this down. If, uh, so if someone was able to work out how to write down the, this, the, what this tensor is for other distributions, then we'd be able to solve the noisy case for more general distributions. But uh, otherwise, it's, uh, it's kind of tricky.